Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to uh, lesson five of our videos about microeconomics. After talking about the law of demand and law of supply, now it's time to look at equilibriums, which is all about when supply and demand are drawn on the same axes and what that means. So we're going to talk about the fact that the equilibrium being the point where demand and supply are equal. We're going to talk about what happens when the price is set above the equilibrium, what happens when it's set below, what happens when there is a shift in the demand and supply curve and how a new equilibrium is formed. But you're hyped for that because like it's, you've been dreaming of it for days. So you might as well just get straight into it. So you're not going to have to like wait with that intense anticipation. I'm assuming the same anticipation you have for movies, which just haven't been released this year because of COVID. So I don't know when this comes out, I wonder if you've seen Black Widow yet. It's been a while. It keeps getting delayed. All right, key knowledge. So we are going to be talking about uh, the effects of changes in supply and demand on equilibrium prices and quantity traded. One good point today, but there's a lot to go with it. It's relatively simple, but there's a lot inside it. We're going to look. All right, so let's get into it. Equilibriums: the price where quantity supplied and demanded is equal is known as the equilibrium price. So as you can see in the diagram over here, we've drawn supply and demand on the same axes, and this is the equilibrium right in the middle here. This point right here, whatever price that is, is the equilibrium price, and that is the equilibrium quantity. So if we looked at a market, say the market for um, pitters, because I just had Nando's for lunch, and it was surprisingly underwhelming. It seems to matter. What's the deal with that? Um, but let's just say a pitter is like, it's like $7. Maybe it's not. I'm pretty out of touch. Let's just say 100 get demanded there. <clears throat> from the general public. That's the price where quantity demand and quantity supplied are equal. If they set the price lower, it's going to affect things. And if they set the price higher, it's going to create some effects that we're going to look at as we go through this. But equilibrium, always where the price um, means that the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied is exactly the same amount. So when the price is set above the equilibrium, it creates a situation where supply exceeds demand. This is known as a surplus, glut, or oversupply. Any of those words is totally fine. But you can see, like when we have our demand, I mean, our equilibrium here, if the price is set higher than the equilibrium, as it has been in this case, so this would be the equilibrium price PE. As you can see, when you follow that price along, demand is relatively low um, at this point. The supply is all the way over here, and that makes sense because. If the price is higher, there's less demanded. And if the price is um, higher, there's going to be more supplied because it's profit motivation. It's going to make the businesses want to supply that to the market. So it creates a situation, this whole point above the equilibrium, this whole quantity up here is a surplus glut or oversupply. Eventually, um, what would happen from there? What's going to happen when there's too much an oversupply? Well, supply is going to start discounting prices till we get to an equilibrium point and they can clear off excess stock. But when the price is set above the equilibrium, it creates an oversupply because the price is too high. So the um, quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. So next we look at what happens when the price is set below the equilibrium. So this creates a situation where demand exceeds supply. When things are too cheap, this can create a situation known as a shortage or an undersupply. So if we look at our um, price over here, Compare it to the equilibrium. Look at the equilibrium at that point. We set the price lower. The supply is pretty low. The supply is that much. Quantity demand is much higher. And you can see this whole area underneath here creates the shortage. So um, the example I always use for this, like if you watch the video I've done this in the past, which I might put the link for below, because there's other videos I've done explaining demand and supply for year 11 that might help make more sense to you if you aren't getting what you need from this one. Um, I just always use the example of connoisseur ice cream. So connoisseur ice cream is delicious. It comes in like one litre tubs. They look like like fancy looking tubs like this. This is a bad example of it. It's like got a logo like that. It's got a picture of an ice cream on it and whatever flavour it is. And they're normally like $11 for one litre. But pretty often, well not pretty often, but occasionally they go on special for half price, either $5 or $5.50. Half price. When that happens, the 
stock just disappears because that price is below the equilibrium price because people are pretty happy like they could be happy paying seven they could be happy paying 11. when it's set below that it creates a situation where a shortage is occurring because demand is outweighing supply and you'll go to the supermarkets and the shelves will just be empty like you've got to find this ice cream shop and it will just disappear because that is an um shortage or an undersupply when the price is too low it creates shortages um, when there is a shortage what essentially happens is we start bidding up prices until we reach a new equilibrium or re return to the original equilibrium price because um, consumers if they want that item which they now have decided they do they all start agreeing to pay a little bit more until they get it you can also think of the same thing in like if you look at the second the like aftermarket or the scalping market for tickets for sporting events concerts etc when it sells out it creates a shortage and people start paying bidding up prices to pay more for that item on the second hand market. So creating new equilibriums. We look at this from demand, from supply to relatively similar. It's all about the situation that happens. But when there's a favorable shift in demand, initially there's a higher quantity demanded at the same price. So you can see that if there's been a favorable shift, you can see that from the original equilibrium, we're now over here. So more, a greater quantity is being demanded at the same price. Is that what it is? That's the original QE. Um, so you can see more, but much being supplied. Well, not that much. The original amount is still being supplied. Let's create the shortage here. What do we just talk about when a shortage happens? When a shortage happens, consumers start to bid up prices until this new equilibrium point is formed up here. It's really important. So um, the reason why we look at this is all time and VCAR exams that had questions like explain how a new equilibrium is formed. So I'd be like, explain one factor that could cause a favorable shift in demand and explain how a new equilibrium is formed and draw it on the axis provided so normally you get one mark for doing the new demand line sweet easy one mark for your factor and then two marks for your description of how a new equilibrium is formed and a lot of time people can't do this last step and that's because that's what we're talking about here so um, at the new, um, more, well, there's a high quantity because of the favorable shift in demand. There's a high quantity being demanded at the same price. This creates a shortage. As supplies are unwilling to supply that amount, the consumers begin to bid up prices until a new equilibrium is formed at a higher price and slightly lower quantity. Um, and that's new equilibrium formed for it there. But you have to get into that shortage part first. That's really, really, really important. Then we're going to look at it from the other side when there is a unfavorable shift in demand. So when there is an unfavorable shift in demand, initially there's a less quantity demand at the same price. As you can see over here, this creates an undersupply or a shortage or in a surplus. And um, as consumers are unwilling to purchase that good or service at that price. So say for example, we hear that, um, oh, let's say there's a news article saying that if you eat Donuts, they'll give you diabetes. This isn't, I mean, technically if you eat enough, then that's true. Um, that could cause a unfavorable shift in demand. And in that case, suddenly there is way more being supplied than is being demanded. This leads um, businesses or suppliers to start decreasing prices to sell up excess stock. And they do that until this new equilibrium point is formed here at a slightly lower price and less quantity. And that's essentially it for this. So that's the key thing. So knowing what happens above the equilibrium price, what happens below it, and then also what happens when a shift occurs. So what we might just do quickly now is look at it for supply briefly just on this diagram. So if we were to draw a change in supply, so if we were to say a favorable shift in supply, and we have a new supply line here, um, well, what's happening, you can see that when supply shifts favorably, um, Suddenly there's more being supplied at the same price. We're at this point here. We use red for that. But only um, the original amount is still being demanded. What's going to happen is that creates an oversupply or a surplus, starts decreasing prices until a new equilibrium is formed at a slightly lower price, but a higher quantity demanded overall compared to originally. Um, that's essentially it. So like, and then if you have unfavorable, it causes a shortage. So you can just kind of tell by plotting out that dotted line across at the price, seeing what's happening, and then explaining what happens to get to that new equilibrium price. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me, send me a message, send a comment. 
whatever's good for you. Uh, next up, we'll be looking at elasticity of supply and demand, which is a bit more complicated um, and confuses a lot of students. Hopefully that will go well for you. But yeah, other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.